you have entered the aqua brain i'm your virgil drew on today's show we're gonna talk stickers man we're gonna talk snowboarding we're gonna talk wakeboard videos we're gonna talk stickers that's right the man behind diecutstickers.com daniel diederichs hey how the hell are you <laughs> where are you right now you got you make a little makeshift studio like in the basement or something yeah, no, I'm actually, uh, this is my garage, and uh, it is probably about 10 degrees hotter than it is outside, which is right around 90, so I, I've been sweating. This is going to be the sweatiest Aqua Brain TV so far. I'm glad I could uh, be a part <laughs> of this journey with you. It's hey, getting wet and wild, bro. It's yeah, man. Wild. Yeah. Hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Let's talk about diecutstickers.com. And then maybe maybe later we can talk about Ten Two and uh, Western and Mount Baker and Section Eight and stuff like that. But let's let's sure. talk about the company that you you still have going. And uh, when did you start start the company? And how did that how did that happen? Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, I started the company in the spring of two thousand two in Bothell, Washington. Uh, my parents had a three car garage, and I took the far right third bay of their three car garage, emptied out all of the refuse and leftovers and just kind of stuff they had collected from, you know, 30, 40 years of existing <laughs> on this planet and either, you know, discarded it in the trash or recycled it or just, you know, gave it away. And we cleared out that bay and made a little makeshift studio. And, you know, I, I started Medford Technologies was really the first company name. I didn't actually get diecutstickers.com. That came by way of a really good friend of mine and still to this day, kind of a mentor of mine, Chris. Swears and his brother Greg Swears, they actually own Seattle Print Shop, okay. which is a pretty uh, well established screen print company up on the hill, kind of by I think like Garfield High School in gotcha. downtown Seattle, kind of 23rd and Jackson neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I started the company, and he said, Hey, you know, my brother and I have been sitting on this URL for a couple of years. Oh. We thought we were going to do something with it. You started like the sticker company and, you know, backing up. The relationship, kind of the uh, ground zero, if you will, for Greg and Chris Spears and I was I was working for a clothing company out of Kirkland, Washington. I had my externship when I was going to Western Washington down at this company based out of Kirkland, Washington. And uh, I kind of got familiar with the screen printing industry. And we had a bunch of local partners that would help us fulfill orders that were above and beyond our capacity at the time. And Greg okay. and Chris were one of those outsource partners. And you know, he and I and his brother, we just really kind of saw eye to eye. We had a great kind of that same matching resonance and just energy level and just the passion to help customers grow. And uh, when I quit the clothing company in, you know, March of 2002 and started uh, Medford Technologies, which is later now to become diecutstickers.com, he, he invited me to actually buy diecutstickers.com from him and his brother. And all I had to do, they didn't really want any money. They just wanted me to bring the, uh, the URL current, if you will, with the, the host manager and uh, take it from there and you know they said if they ever made you know, if, ever, if ever ever made it then you know remember them and, and make it fair so um, wow I did that I actually did that in 2006 2007 Greg called and um, <laughs> said that he actually had a buyer for the URL and at that time I still hadn't really done much with it um, it was still kind of sitting in my online portfolio and I said well how much is he asking for and he told me and I said I can match that I didn't really have the money at the time I literally oh, really? gave him every penny in my savings accounts. Wow. If you will. And I, I gave them money and I said, you know, that's totally fair. And I, and I honor uh, how noble you've been and how fair you have been to me and how generous you were at the onset back, you know, five years ish wow. prior to that time. And I said, I'm going to wire you the money. Give me your, your savings account number and the bank name and I'll get you the money by the end of the next day. And I did that. And we still re have remained friends. We still, you know, Instagram, DM, text. He actually came out to Seattle. I think two years ago and actually saw our new facility and we hadn't seen each other in a decade and it was pretty special to show him what the house of die cut has become yeah um, you know, through all of our passion and just our commitment to making sure our customers are always growing and getting the best product and greg was just smitten he was like super stoked yeah. and i could tell that he was proud that i continued the torch that he and his brother had slowly started trying to ignite with some flint yeah. back in the in the woods you know back in 2000 1999 whenever they had originally procured the website and kind of sat on it so um yeah it's been it's been quite a journey but there's been a lot of key players and you know greg and chris swears definitely i mean are at the top of the stack aside from my parents of course who initially funded the company but you know without greg and chris being so generous and 
really kind of understanding my energy and like my passion just for being who I am and my just this is my zest for entrepreneurialism. They were like, man, it's just going to be in your hands. It'll be just, it'll be way more than we can ever make it. So see where you can take it. And you know, today, gosh, man, it's still yeah. looking back. It's like, it's an incredible journey that I just, I, I can't even remember and recall all the footsteps that I, I have had along the way, but I know there's been a lot of people that have gotten our company to where it is today. And I thank them every day, whether to their face or just, you know, in my prayer and, and in my thoughts when I'm driving into the office, I get to walk into this building. It's just magnificent. I mean, way bigger than a, a, a garage. I'm just going to put it that way. And yeah. it, it's very humbling. Our beginnings well, are very humbling. You know, you, you have great energy, right? So that kind of, you kind of attract people that have similar, similar energy, you know, and yes, sometimes, sometimes you got to reel it in a little bit, you know, and I know that I, I we did some stickers for you back in the day. You had to kind of reel, reel me in a little bit, you know, but uh, so, so yes, you mentioned a clothing company in Kirkland and I, and I do remember that I remember crossing the bridge and going down yeah. and visiting you there and it literally was in a house. Um, you want to, you want to tell that story about your last day at that company? Yeah. Or are we going to save that? Yeah, for- you know, I mean, it's not a pretty story. Uh, you know, I, I think it really, that moment really made me who I am today with regards to how I participate and engage with my staff. Um, basically in a nutshell, my last day at this business I was working at previous to starting diecutstickers.com, I actually had to call the police to get my last paycheck. Uh, the oh, paycheck man. was already like a week and a half late. I was supposed to get paid bi-weekly and, you know, I had my van packed up. My office was cleaned out and I asked the owner at the time for my last paycheck, please, and I'll be off his property and out of his hair. And uh, he resisted and denied me, you know, what was rightfully mine and I had like honestly had earned. And uh, so I called Kirkland police. <laughs> they came up there and, you know, KBD. My parents always taught me, you know, being dignit, being dignified and being humble is like, you know, those are characteristics that really go, will travel far and take you really far in life. And I, you know, I, I, I knew I was in the right, um, but I always kept my head high, my shoulders back. And um, I didn't say anything that was, you know, uh, inappropriate at the time, even though I was feeling a certain way about the individual, but the policeman yeah, handled it. And, you know, I think the true colors of this individual came when he crumpled up my check and threw it at my chest in front of the cop, hit the ground. I looked at him, I was like, thank you. Eye to eye, like didn't even break my gaze and then bent down, picked it up, looked over at the police officer, said, thank you for your time, appreciate you. Got in the van, drove down, cashed the check and haven't seen him since. It's been 18 18 plus years. But that builds, that it's those experiences while they're they're not the greatest, but they build a certain character and, and, you know, I, I know that you, you treat your employees with a lot of uh, respect. And, and I think that there's something to be said for that, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I, I, like I said earlier, when we started talking, it's just, it's just the fundamentals, you know, the please and the thank yous, being yeah. gracious, being grateful, being generous. Um, it is my company, so, you know, the, there's a lot riding on my decision. So I do also have to take into consideration what is in the best interest of the entire organization as a whole, like including like all the vendors, any partners that we have that assist us in making components of the things that we sell, the staff. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a lot to weigh and a lot to, to manage and be uh, cognizant of, but at the end of the day, the fundamentals will, will always win. Those trickeries and those, you know, smoke and mirrors, those tricks only last so long. It's a very fleeting mindset and people see past that. I think I'm still at the, at the helm of our company uh, you know, 18 plus years because I, 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 I work the fundamentals. I'm disciplined to work the fundamentals. Our company probably hasn't grown as big as it probably could have in the hands of other people. Um, nefarious business practices probably could have come into play with those individuals to take the brand to the next level. But I feel really proud of where the company is right now. We're still in business through this whole pandemic, um, which I'm really, really thankful for. And, you know, we've been able to retain, gosh, almost 75%, 70% oh, wow. of our staff. Uh, that was on active payroll oh, that's on crazy. February that's 15th. Good. So you know, it's, it's fundamentals. It just really is. Like, there's no, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel as a, as a manager. I, I look everybody in the eye. I recognize everybody. We started doing this thing a couple of years ago where everybody's anniversary. So whether it's their first year at the company, third year, eighth year, 10th year, however, we stopped the entire organization. Everyone still remains on the clock. We have this spin wheel and <laughs> I speak, you know, for 
three to five minutes about the individual impact they've had on my life, impact they've had on our organization. All eyes are on him or her, and That's then they awesome. get to spin this cool spin wheel, and there's like prizes. There's like you know, hundred dollar yeah. gift card, hundred dollars cash, uh, oh, free man. massage, full paid day, and there's like you know, a plethora of things. I think there's like sixteen yeah. or seventeen slots on it. So it's like it's just really about taking the time to treat those how you want to be treated. And that's, you know, my, my mom and dad, Steve and Mary were the ones that are original investors into the brand. And they were the first believers and, you know, visionaries of what I saw. They saw through me and really propelled me to that. And, you know, they're always just like, just do the right thing. Just simply do the right thing and treat yeah. people how you want to be treated. So, you know, backing up, not being treated how I wanted to be treated when I had my previous job, having to call the police. I mean, just right. being so humiliated with the check thrown at me. It's like, Okay, I, I understand that's you, not me. Mm -hmm. I didn't do anything wrong here, but that, you know, it was heart was racing. I'm going to tell you, like, that was a pretty tense moment. And I just, yeah, I didn't ever want that for my staff. You know, they, they wake up every single day. They don't have to come into our building, you know, and my wife, Erica, and I are really thankful for, for the grace they give us and like the hard work they put in uh, and their willingness to come in every day. I know they got stuff going on outside those walls. I do too, but yeah. they show up. They show up with a smile. They show up high-fiving their colleagues. They show up pulling people up by their bootstraps. They, they give them hugs. They give them high-fives. They just It's just acknowledgement. Acknowledgement for everybody's contribution, whether you weeded five that day or sold 30,000 stickers. It doesn't necessarily matter because it all adds up. Yeah, yeah, the whole yeah. significantly more powerful than the sum of its parts. You know, And I think we all just, we're just doing the fundamentals, man. We're just making stickers. But how we go about making the stickers, I think, is so special and unique for our brand. That's why we're in business. 18 years. 18 years. That's, that's a run. I know. That's a great. That's a crazy run. So I'm going to take you back to the beginning. What was, what was the problem you were trying to solve with DCS? Pricing. You know, so when we were working at the clothing company, we didn't have the capacity and the equipment to manufacture our own stickers that were branded, obviously, with our, our suite of images to then promote and to sell through distribution channels. And every time I saw the invoices, I just was like, this is, this is ludicrous. We're getting robbed right in front of our eyes, underneath our nose. There's gotta be a better way. There's gotta there's got be a margin in here that is just so incredibly padded. So I just started doing yeah. some research and we actually brought in that technology into the, the business the last couple of months um, to actually manufacture our own stickers and banners. And it just was significant cost savings. And I just, I, I felt and I was a part of the, 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 the dialogue on how these people treated their customers, i.e. us at the time. And right. I was like, man, there's just got to be a, a different way. There's got to be a, a more um, attractive way and a more honest way of going about this business. Still making money, obviously. Got to pay bills. Got to pay taxes. Got to give people raises. Got to buy new equipment when they fail. But just doing an honest day's work and, and knowing that we're not here to gouge one person one time. We're here to grow with them. Um, and if they grow, we grow. And it's really it's just really about treating them how you want to be treated. You know, they may not know anything about stickers, but we do. So yeah, it's teach. really, you've got to teach them. Like you said, yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. And for, and I know on your website, <clears throat> diecutstickers.com, there are tools to kind of help people um, in selecting the right, the right sticker for them. And, and, and it alleviates some of those conversations, or at least when you have those conversations, you can kind of cut to the chase. Um, yeah. Tell me if I'm, if I'm off there, but at least that's what I, that's what I see when I go to DCS. And, um, so from the beginning, and you, you've said you've kind of changed, but you, you haven't really changed. Um, how would you say you've evolved from obviously, I mean, you know, maybe saying coming from the garage, obviously into a shop, but, and now having your own shop. But aside from that, how has the, the business evolved? I think we're just going to, I'm going to go right back to the epicenter of fundamentals. I think at first, you know, the, the unknown and the volatility and orders coming in and out um, really kind of drove me to just kind of hastily work. And I was just obviously always doing the best I possibly could because I'm, I'm very OCD and um, my mind is engineered and woven uh, to be meticulous. I love angles. I love nineties. I love things to be perfectly in their place. Just ask my wife, drives her crazy. Uh, or you can ask my mom. I actually used to rearrange my room when I was a little boy uh, in our home in Clearview. She's like, man, you should be an engineer or architect. You are just, your mind is so precise. You love things, perfect placement with perfect allowances. And I'm like, I still am kind of that way, you know, but I think the, the biggest thing for me is just 
surrendering to the process and trusting the people that I have around me. You know, at first I was very guarded and you know, you were a part of that too, right? It was just, it was just me. And I, I was, I wouldn't say I was really controlling, but I was, I was controlling because I was the only person there and I wasn't really allowing people to flourish and thrive and just blossom um, in my presence and, you know, maybe under my mentorship or for me to learn from them. And I think over the years, I just really allowed myself to be a part of the conversation instead of driving the conversation. Um, of course, you know, there's times where I got to put my foot down and um, I got to make those tough decisions and that is, you know, in the betterment of the entire organization. But for the most part, I, we really try to have this round table mindset at the brand now. And that was something that I didn't really ever have the resource to do or the privilege to do. But now that I do like, just listening to the staff and asking, uh, you know, our general manager, Jerry Persky, he's brilliant. Our marketing coordinator, Keith Vance, he's beyond intelligent. And he's just so, he, he's so calm that he brings yeah, me yes, to a yeah. level of clarity, right? I move at a yeah, very, yeah. very, 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 very fast pace every day. And uh, Keith, the marketing uh, coordinator for the company, he's been with us for, gosh, almost 10 years now. He wow. just, he understands me, He but he also understands the marketplace. And uh, he's able to take my just, 5,000 miles an hour narrative and storytelling, and he can kind of compress, separate, and dissect it into like the appropriate channels and lanes, if you will. And, you know, without him, like this company would be in a different position, you know, same with Jerry and all the individuals that came before those guys, you know, that are no longer with the company. But I think at the end of the day, and at the center of, of who I am and why the company's still here, it's just doing the fundamentals, you know, really taking the interests 100% into the customer's growth and into the customer's best interest because I, i've been telling this to the company for the last couple of years what's in the best interest of our customers is really in the best interest of the company and i think a couple of people used to look at me like okay I, wait what'd you just say and you know i would say it again i continue to say that uh, when i stand on my pulpit and speak to the company as a, as a whole it's like you know we, we really need them we need them to grow we need our customers to grow and and whatever we need to do to allow that whether we need to give them pricing concessions uh, free shipping, discounts, throwing an extra hundred, doing for free. I, it, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because we are here to help them. We are a partner. We are a we are a partner-minded company. We are not a transactional company. This is not like one of our competitors where you can't call us because we don't have a phone number. We only want you to go through our online channel. Like, call us. Come into our business. Come check yeah. out our skate park next door. Come meet the owner. The <laughs> owner's there like nearly every day. Like, it's an owner-operated company. I think it just has a different feel. But, you know, really at, 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 the, at the, the nucleus of it all is just doing what is right because doing the right thing is always the right thing. And that's what our company is going to do. And, hey, you know, if, if we're late to the game, but we show up honestly and morally and ethically aligned with who we know he, we are and how we want to be perceived, then so what? I'll show up late every dang day. <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm not going to – I'm not – I was going to ask you something about the skate park, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Because there was somebody. I mean, I mean, again, from the garage to the property we're at in Tuckwilla, Washington, it's. Yeah. I mean, it's remarkable, man. It's like it's it's humbling. You get to walk underneath the you know the the threshold or over the threshold and into these these cavities, these chambers, and one of which you know is what we call the pavilion. It's about a forty five hundred yeah. square foot building structure that's adjacent to the we're in right now. And it's, it's been a remarkable gift to to our community really it's it's like a treasure you know and that was one of the things that robert the old ceo of k2 sports inc before it got bought um i met him in his office in downtown seattle before we took possession of the skateboard park they got bought by newell brick which is basically owns rubbermaid and uh robert okay. was told by the big team that came in said you gotta get rid of the skateboard park find a home or we're gonna take it out and we're gonna burn it you know but this has been in, oh, in the k2 family in the snow and ski oh. industry for god i would say 20 years wow. before that moment wow so it was a big deal. It's, it's, uh, we, you know, we like to refer to it as a kind of like a uh, industry franchise heirloom. You know, it's very important. Yeah. There's a lot of people, yeah. blood, sweat, tears, creativity, and, um, and, and joy that's gone in there. There's been a lot of like really cool moments that if those walls, if those coping, if those screws, if that masonite skate light could talk, I mean, it would be, you would be sitting there listening for years and years and years and your ears would be just warm and your heart would be so full of just, beautiful stories of people. And I wanted to kind of preserve that. And we, we had the opportunity, we had this building down at Tukwila and they had an open cavity, big building section that we weren't going to use yet. It was going to be our expansion area if need be down the line. And we got the skateboard park down, took seven flatbed trucks. Wow. And um, it was quite the process, it was quite the production. My buddy, Jeff Lucky Nelson was so gracious and 
stepped up. He, uh, he builds all the trade show booths for like Smith and Kavu and a bunch of other companies. So he's very, very handy. Um, he understands just the craft of, of building and um, understands how wood works. And he's just got a huge team behind him. So I hired him to come down. Uh, should have paid him way more than he requested. And it just was so generous. I mean, again, we're just surrounded with good people. And I think like you said earlier, you know, my energy attracts a certain kind of people, but I think just overall likeness attracts. And um, we've just been really surrounded with amazing people. And now we get to use a skateboard park. We give it out to the community for free. Uh, kids from anywhere in Tukwila, Des Moines, White Center, uh, Renton, South Seattle, wherever they are, they can come down, yeah. just walk in a die cut, tell Sam you're there, grab a bracelet, uh, show them your ID to make sure that you're over 18 and uh, sign a hold harmless form then we're all sure. over next door and get a helmet on and skate and it's you know it's yeah. like 2000 square foot skateboard park it's epic yeah one of my uh one of my friends um jason singler likes to come down and and skate that skate that far i think he got That's in trouble crazy. for not wearing a helmet hey you know i mean you know one degree <laughs> separation you know you're my cousin and you yeah. know i love you and i would imagine people that love you too that were you know a equals b and b equals c well a equals c and it's just amazing the people that come down there and participate in the park and how like respectful they are of the park you know it, it's it's hands off like we're I'm, I'm next door in die cut my entire yeah. team's over in die cut. there's no chaperones there's no wow. like, i don't have a pavilion staff so you know it's a buddy system everything's free so there's a whole rack of skateboards i could use knee pads double wow. pads wrist pads helmets um we've been trying to keep stocks it obviously has been shut since march because of the pandemic so yeah uh, you guys do I mean, have to I, shut that i gotta put that out there no one's been skating anything because of the pandemic yeah. um but we have like a big, uh, like a refrigerator, little kiosk that we got from Columbia Distributing uh, uh, for free. We did some stickers in exchange for one of the guys' uh, neighbors who had a sick, uh, like a, one of his sons came down with cancer, terminal cancer. Ooh. So we traded out a bunch of stickers and a bunch of propaganda to just really push that, that voice and opportunity to spread that young man's message. And then we got this cool vending machine. So that's stocked full with juices and waters <laughs> and it's free. Kids can just walk up there, Man. type A1 and they can grab a, a beverage for free. Everything of that park is free. God, like how really, cool is that, Dan? I mean, that's like, dude, it's amazing. It's what I want to do. You know, people ask me, what do you want to do in five years? And I say, all I want to be doing is charity work and philanthropy, you know, and Erica really speaks to that too and echoes that same sentiment. She's been an amazing partner for me, you know, since we met in 2004, she just has such an altruistic heart and is just so kind and caring. And this has been a remarkable partnership for her and I, you know, 2004, the business was very small at that time. And um, we were just trying to figure out our way like what we wanted to do and whether I wanted to continue to do that. And maybe I, I would sell die cut stickers.com and go work for my family's, you know, shipping business or go get a job elsewhere. I didn't really know, but she's just been yeah. the steadiest out of, out of most people in my life. And this has been really encouraging and been my biggest cheerleader. So, you know, it's my wife, man, hats off to her for putting yeah. up with this entrepreneur. Cause I'm, it's like her <laughs> to cap with me sometimes, man. Yeah. Well, you know, that's uh it's, it's not a bad thing to be one of those cats out there. <laughs> Causing yeah, yeah. problems. Um, hey, so I was wondering, what was the biggest, what's the biggest hurdle that you've had to overcome since you started? Yeah, you know, and I, I think starting in the parents' garage, humbling by myself, in my own head, just working through the mechanics of the day. You know, I realized the pain points. I would work with my supply chain. So it was just me. And then as the business grew and we had a demand that was increasing, we needed more personnel. So I think really just managing the growth and, and mostly with regards to staff, okay. finding, yeah. finding ways to speak to the staff, understanding that everybody's love language and everybody's managerial voice and narrative is different and just really understanding um, the, the science behind how to manage humans and how to speak <laughs> to them because you can't speak to one individual the same way you speak to another. Like you just have to sure. really understand what makes them tick. You know, one person may be wanting more money while the other person wants more time because their time is more precious than an extra dollar on a paycheck. So I think that was for me, my biggest obstacle was really trying to figure out what really made uh, you know, all these beautiful people that came to work for me every day and fought, you know, tirelessly for the mission and, and, and the name diecaststickers.com. Like what would, what would bring them joy and what would, you know, keep them there, keep them wanting to fight, keep them wanting to sweat out every day and, and, and give their best to our customers. And um, that's definitely been like the biggest, the biggest, I think, opportunity and, and gift was just being a part of that journey, you know, for me growing, being, you know, exercising, just letting go. <laughs> and getting people that trust in the organization to speak on, on the company's behalf and, you know, writing policies. Uh, one of the biggest thing that we did, I think, was really making the employee handbook. That was a pivotal moment, I think, and just really defining expectations. You know, everybody wants to know, like, what do I need to do? How can I grow? 
what can I be compensated? What happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? You know, just really kind of giving a roadmap for employment and, and with the employee handbook, I want to say we made that in 2010. And I think I've been operating under it. We're like on iteration four or five now. It's just, yeah. I mean, such a priceless tool and really has allowed people of, of, you know, let's say like managers and supervisors. I always coach them. I say, if it's in the handbook and someone breaches the handbook, everybody signs that handbook day one good faith right. and consciousness. We asked them if you've read it, you have any questions, we'll go through it. Our business manager, Brianne, is very patient. He has got, she's just brilliant and she can yeah. just work with people at that onboarding process. So like making sure that people understand what the business expects from them, but then also letting them know what they can expect from the company. And that employee handbook has been insurmountable uh, in overcoming, you know, pretty difficult discussions and, and conversations with people that we never thought we'd have to have these discussions. But, you know, at the epicenter between that side of the table and this side of the table was the handbook. And we would just go through the handbook. And a lot of times it just really would remind them of what they signed up for. And sometimes people would walk away and say, no, thank you. I, I don't agree to this now. Uh, maybe I did last year, but I don't now. And that's cool. Hey, you know, we'll go agree and let bygones be bygones. We'll move forward. You go do your next chapter and we'll continue on with our mission uh, to do the best work we can. So employee handbook, managing employees, and just trusting the process of just the fundamentals. Just treat them how you'd want to be treated. Yeah. So would you that's say it. that, would you say that the, that's also your greatest success then would, would be that handbook you think? Yeah, I, I think a culmination of, of the handbook, giving expectations, the managers now know how to manage, the managers now know what series of events they can take for um, coaching people, if you will, sure. if there's mistakes being, being made or chronic absences or a little bit of insubordination, whatever. I mean, our group right now is brilliant. We don't have really any issues that I can even recall over the last yeah. year. You know, like we just got a really, really, really caring and talented team. But again, you know, if, if things kind of get out of line and, you know, the wheels are going to wobble, sure. the engine's going to get, like, it's going to need a tune-up. And I think the employee handbook for us is definitely our crown jewel. It just allows the company to give itself a little bit of a tune-up every year. We kind of go through, work with our lawyer, understand what new employment laws are, tell the team about what new expectations they can for the company because those change every year. Pr protecting their rights, I think, is one thing that we do really good. Like, we're very forthcoming. We don't get new news and we're like, cool, don't tell them push us under the carpet. If they find out, okay, we'll, we'll work with that. But we're like, right. Brand. I mean, Brand. she's amazing. She'll, she'll publish it. It'll be in your employee paycheck uh, or it'll be posted in the break room. She has her own uh, kind of this, this cool wall. It's like a bulletin board where she can post all this new documentation from awesome. Washington state labor yeah. industries. And just, again, just how would, if, if I wasn't the owner and I reported to Jim's company, how would I want to be treated? I, I would want to be protected and I'd want to be looked at as an invaluable asset. I think just yeah, managing the people with that mindset is, again, I don't know, I don't know how else we would be in business after 18 years, especially in this industry, if we didn't treat our people well, like family, like yeah. we, sound, we, 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 we bicker and we, we kind of get into it once in a while, but it's because we care. The passion just sometimes over, over, overshadows our emotional intelligence. You know, I always say like, don't let your, don't let, don't let your, your emotions overpower your intelligence, but sometimes our passion does. And I, and I'm okay with that, <laughs> I'm okay with that you know, cause like that's, that, that's what makes this company great. That's what makes it so electrifying. You walk into the building, you're like, there's something about this place. I don't know what it is, but I can feel it. And I, that visceral feeling is something that I want from the moment they agree to work with us because they got what they what they needed on pricing, on turn time, and on quality of the attributes. And then to the moment they open up that box, they do this grand reveal. I want that energy to just pour out and just bathe them and just love and just thankfulness. You know, and I think we do that. Yeah, and I th I think uh, I think you've actually already answered my last question. But is there anything that you want to add to uh, what sets you apart from other sticker companies? I mean, bar none are charitable contributions. I am, I am very, very, very adamant. And you can, I mean, you could ask Jerry, the general manager, you can ask Brianne, our business manager. Almost every month we do deployments to local organizations, uh, one of which is the um, Tequila Pantry. It's like a food bank. And they have United Methodist Church, which is above them. And they do a bunch of housing for individuals that have really large barriers to basic needs. Uh, oh, home individuals, mental health individuals, and it's just an, it's an incredible campus. And it's an incredible story to play just a very small role in. So nearly every month, Eric and I give deployments of diapers and 
box fans. Wow. We're doing a deployment next month, Erica and I, or hopefully sooner than that, we're going to give, you know, 20 to 30 box fans over to Kina, who's one of the directors for King County Homeless, Homelessness Outreach Program. And she'll, she'll then divvy those up and she'll actually go out and, and work with individuals that are on the precipice of going into homelessness, um, whether they're going to lease or getting kicked out, eviction, lost their job, and she'll be able to give them tools and, and, and things that we take for granted. A box fan, you know, 1999, is an easy barrier for us to kind of overcome and, and procure whenever we want. Yeah. The most of us, but a lot of people out there, you know, there's millions of individuals that, that don't, that's not their story. And mm -hmm. I love the fact that diecaststickers.com plays a role in that story and helping individuals get access to those things that maybe in their mind and for years previous were nearly impossible to acquire. So, you know, book drives, homelessness, uh, care packages with, you know, 16 to 20 different hygiene products built into one Whoa. food drive. Uh, I mean, you name it, clothing drive. We're trying to do something at least every other month, if not every month. So it's been, I think that's really what is the redefines what a company should be when you're a community centric and you have that, that, um, that philosophy in mind of it takes a village and I must, must make my community as strong as it can be because if my community's thriving, then we're going to thrive. Plain yeah. Simple. Oh, I love it, man. That's, that's awesome. Are you, <laughs> I hear knocking. <laughs> that's my kid. That's Harper and Cannon. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, well, uh, uh, do you want to do uh you want to do a little short lightning round? Uh, I've got a couple, a couple of things. Uh, I wanted to, I wanted to talk about, or I wanted to have you talk about section eight and I don't know if I, I'd imagine section eight distribution no longer exists, but do you do you still uh do you still talk with Kilgus and Bertner and and the DWD guys and stuff? I mean I just had a phone conversation for an hour with Sean Genovese, one of the co-founders and co-owners of Dinosaurs Will Die uh, yesterday afternoon and Sean Kilgus and I text probably one to seven times a week. It just depends on if he's traveling for work and Jesse yeah. and I will will text and see each other multiple times a year. And I, I consider those three individuals really some of my closest friends and I look up to all three of them in uniquely different ways, but at the, at the center of all three of them, they're just very kind and caring and they're so creatively, they're so creative. They just, in everything that they do, one, you know, one owns a snowboard company, one owns a video company and the other one is the global team manager for another huge snowboard company. So they just, they're in that same sphere. They have the same love language. They have the same just interests that I do, but they're all entrepreneurs at heart, which, you know, resonates with me because I too am an entrepreneur. Um, and I just, they're just so thoughtful. And I think I'm really looking for people to be surrounded with that are very, very thoughtful and in amplifying and multiplying my life instead of detracting and subtracting and dividing my journey. You know, like I'm looking for people to kind of help me get to the next step, which would be my, the better version of myself, which I feel like I'm in a really good version right now. But um, yeah, those guys are phenomenal. I, 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 I stay in very close contact with them. That's awesome. Well, <laughs> hey, Dan, thanks for joining me on the brain, man. Hey, you're welcome. This is, this is our rescue dog. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, that's, this is Cookie. So we lost our 16-year-old teacup Yorkie. Her name is Ellie in October. And so a couple of weeks after that, we rescued Cookie and her sister, Foxy. They were a bonded pair from the Seattle Humane Society. So now we oh, went nice. from one to none <laughs> to two dogs. They come and join you at the office. Here. They they come uh, and join you at the office, or you know, Ellie used to. She yeah. was very calm, relaxed. These dogs are young, spry, and rambunctious. Yeah. Very rambunctious. But we love them. Uh, I think that they love being a part of our family, and we couldn't love them any any further. That's awesome, Dan. I look forward to uh, to hearing about some of your upcoming charity actions I, I love looking on uh, linkedin and seeing what you're up to um definitely if i was in the area i'd, I'd probably be more uh more involved if i could be um, yeah i mean you know you can always look to just the diecutstickers.com instagram page it's just diecutstickers d-o-t com it's actually the dot is actually spelled out d-o-t and you can follow me as well at daniel underscore dieterichs uh, for just a glimpse into who I am, like who runs the company, I thought it was really important for people to see. So I try to be as active as I am. I'm more active on my stories than I am my feed. So if anybody's interested in getting a picture of my family and getting a picture of <laughs> our ongoing journey, I'm more than happy to welcome you into um, the database. Right on.
Well, go check him out, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining me on The Brain. Diecutstickers.com. Thanks, Dan. Love you. <laughs> Love you, bro. Bye. See ya. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you know when we put new videos out. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Brain Aqua. This has been Aqua Brain TV. Remember to keep your head up and keep those knees bent. <laughs>